my name is Sarah and welcome back to another episode of Talking Fast. Alongside me, like every single week, is manager Jacob. What are you drinking or eating or Sarah, vibing what, with? What's up? What's up <laughs> what, what, this week? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got, I got a wild one for you. Uh, this weekend, picked them up from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I was playing hard to get. I was like, I don't know if I want these. No, no, no. And Haley was like, no, what flavor do you want? And I was like, well, I don't know, maybe blueberry. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, don't know. Have you ever had the mini Pop-Tarts? The little no. Pop-Tart bites? They come in little packs and they're no. like mini tiny little Pop-Tarts. I haven't, but I got to go get them now. Picture a tater tot size, <gasps> Pop-Tart, everything okay. else. I like Ooh, that. It's good. They're good. You know what? And okay, there's nothing more disappointing than, you know, like little packs of snacks you open one up and I'm talking, I'm looking at you airplanes when you looking, you open up a little snack and they're like maybe one or two things inside mm -hmm. that little pack. Pop-Tarts, I swear they load in like 17 of those oh, guys. They not actually, quite, like not quite 17, but it's, but it's like, like actually a good fill portion. The, fill the pack. Yeah. I, Pop-Tarts was like, I was never allowed to eat them growing up. So that was like when I moved to university, like to the city. You rebelled with the Pop-Tarts. I would go to Metro <laughs> across from the RCC every oh, single day and Metro. buy boxes of the s'mores Pop-Tarts. And I lived uh, off of Pop-Tarts in first year. Oh, I destroyed that Metro in university. Always. Pop-Tarts and, um, you know, the cereal. We were talking about it. The, oh. We've talked about this in another episode. Cereal. I, it was brand, another cereal I wasn't allowed to eat. Pa uh, Lucky uh, Charms. Loop. Oh, Lucky Charms. Those That's were good. the two things I, I messed up that the Metro. pizza buns at Metro. Oh, those were also so good. <laughs> what are you eating or drinking this week? Kind of in the same vein, like a little supposed to be a child snack. <laughs> okay. But we're crushing them. Is Nolan and I got this massive box of Uncrustables from what Costco. Are, what are those? Now, I think Uncrustables used to only be a thing in the States. It's basically a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that's like pre-made in this little round it's bread but it's like there's no crust on it oh Uncrustables. and you just put them like in the a little wagon wheel style yeah like kinda... it looks like a wagon wheel but it's like a pb and j in the oh, middle okay and after a run hits like nothing else it's perfect really? like catch me at the toronto waterfront half marathon and like somebody <laughs> handing me an uncrustable the second i cross that finish line like that's what i run for now is my uncrustable all right someone tagging uncrustables in the comments Smuckers? <laughs> i'll wear a t-shirt actually i won't do that but still <laughs> what are we reading or watching this week sir last night nolan made me drive with him to vaughn because we had oh. to go see oppenheimer on the original 70 millimeter. Because did you know that most IMAX theaters are not proper IMAX? I, I learned this. I learned this recently. Through all of this. There's actually only two in like Ontario. One is in Mississauga and one is oh, in Oh, wow. Vaughan. Not that many at all. Uh, the rest are recreating IMAX. Like, it's just the bit really big screen. But proper 70 millimeter. Like the actual print that they're yeah, showing. Yeah, that they're shooting. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Is only at those two theaters. So we got tickets for Sunday night. We went to go see Oppenheimer. I really liked it. Have you yeah, seen it yet? I haven't seen it yet. I I, seen hi it yet. I I highly recommend it. It was really good. Now, you probably haven't seen it in a regular theater no. yet, but like, would you say it was worth it to okay. do the IMAX mm. experience? Yes and no. The issue is because like they only have so much 70 millimeters film, the entire, like anything that they reshot clearly wasn't shot on 70 millimeter. Uh, so it goes back and forth. Okay. So that was a little jarring for me. And I didn't know that was like a thing that happens. I assumed the whole movie was 70 millimeter. Still busy in the theater though? It was packed. Like yeah. a sold out theater. You try it's to insane. sneak into Barbie to watch it for a third time? <laughs> no, I don't need to see it for a third time yet. I was, yeah, no, I don't need to, but. Amazing. Well, this week I'm watching, and I, I dove into this a little bit when I got into the New York City Marathon, but now mm -hmm. I'm like diving in again because it's only a few months away. And, and as people know, you are training for the Toronto Waterfront Half Marathon. I will be running that as well, but I'm also doing the New York City Marathon, mm -hmm. which is set of the boat. So I've been watching like vlog experiences That's of cool, the day. Everyone that I know who lives there or has traveled to like go to see the race says it's one of the most hype experiences yeah. in the city. You're running through all five boroughs, people who aren't, uh, obviously who aren't running, but maybe they don't know someone are still coming out to kind of watch. So uh, it's been looking good and I'm getting hype and it's kind of, you know, acting as a little bit of a motivation to make sure that I'm still getting my miles to, to train properly. Is there also vlogs of people that just go and drink on all the patios like I will be doing while you're doing the physical activity? I, I'm just going to be... I try to avoid those. If I see them in the background, <laughs> I'll cover my own eyes because I don't want to... That's uh, what my vlog will be. It will be... <laughs> Jacob can be the experience of running and my vlog will be all about uh, a viewer of the New York City Marathon, which it's apparently is one of the most fun days in New York. Oh, super fun. And speaking of another fun day, kind of involved with running as well in a couple of days here on Saturday, the 12th, we yep. also have Talking Fast, Running Faster. Mm -hmm. The first, we're doing 5K Run, run club. club. Yeah, it was the first one that we're doing. Um, 
Jacob and I thought about it. The an hour later, we told the world we'd do it. So we actually sold out, which is crazy. I mean, sold it was, out. It's a free event, but like we sold out of spots for our capacity. We, uh, yeah. I don't have a first aid person there. Like I can't <laughs> yeah. really have more than like the amount of people that we have currently. Um, but just keep an eye on the Instagram talking fast show or Jacob or I's Instagram. And we will let you know if more spots get released. Yeah. But yeah, uh, we're very excited. We're going to post about the whole thing and maybe make a little vlog and who knows, but I'm very excited. If people like it, then we'll do more of them. Hopefully. Yeah. I'm excited. Can't wait. So with that, what are you listening to? What's going to be the vibes for when we do our little run club? Okay. Well, the vibes are going to probably, maybe we'll uh, break out Jacob's song of the summer for the actual run uh but i'm actually throwing it back to something that i was talking about the other day or the other week uh where i've been like listening to more songs as i'm leading into i feel like the back half of my summer is kind of concert yeah. heavy oh right the first right, right. half didn't really see many shows uh but starting to roll in again so i'm seeing or maybe have just seen i think i've just seen when this comes out goth babe and husbands playing you Dan say Forth so Music many Hall. words that i have no idea what they mean. <laughs> if you know them you probably love them and if you don't know them listen give them a chance two separate bands and they will maybe be your new favorite artist it's just like feel good a little indie rock vibes mm -hmm. but like great car music great kind of I don't want to like give it a diss of in the background, but mm -hmm. like it's it's so solid to throw on uh, while you're working or something like that. It's kind of been my working music in the last couple of weeks. I love that. Speaking of like indie rock, I've been blasting Blame Brett by Beaches. Oh, Beaches are so such. I know the song came out like a couple months ago. Like I'm fully aware. I'm very behind. Like I usually am on everything, but I like literally can't stop listening to that song. It's so good. It's so catchy. They all the four of them have just such good style too. Fun fact about Beaches: when they were done with dolls they performed at my much music video dance party when i was 15 years old and so like kylie and jordan like the sisters are like the main girls in band i've known them for god like 12 years really yeah they performed as done with dolls at my they, they always joked that it was performing at my birthday party but it wasn't my birthday party Wait, it was what like, was the event again i won the hometown hero contest when i was 15 to bring a much music video dance party <laughs> but like it was a seventy-five thousand dollar party do sponsored you, by milk okay do they <laughs> what a weird sponsor for yeah but they had party. milkshakes and they had like tim deegan came and hosted it is a milkshake something you want when you're about to hit the dance floor though you, well, we had a we had a hockey shooting thing we had like that big like inflatable thing i'm just jealous because i never went to one i'll have to show you <laughs> it was more extreme than like the much video dance parties anyways they performed when they were done with dolls which is like oh, hilarious. so anytime fun. i see them we talk about it but it was that's the small world that we live in I first saw this guest perform at a Daisy Jones and the Six event here in Toronto and was mesmerized by her stage presence. She's known as a queer pop icon in Toronto who's entered an entire new era with her recent releases, Scary Hot and Pain Relief. And she just dropped her collection of music with the 222 EP on June 30th. And announcing her North America headlining tour, please welcome to Talking Fast, Ralph. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Hi. Welcome. Thank okay, you. so I have to say, I love that it's just Ralph. It, it's giving Cher, <laughs> Madonna. Like that's mm -hmm. the first Beyonce. We were mm -hmm. just talking about Beyonce and how you went to go see her. Where does Ralph come from? So I did folk music before I did pop music. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's still out there on the internet, deeply hidden away. But I I did a lot of that project like under my real name, Rafa or Rafaela. And so when I sort of like started segueing into pop, the producer that I was working with was like, I think we should do it as Rafaela and I was like I think I need to step away from like whatever people think mm -hmm. of me as a folk artist and I need to like kind of create this new persona this new like this new role to step into yeah. um and so we were trying to find something that married like Rafa my real name um with something that felt different and so it took us a long time but we like <laughs> kind of landed on Ralph because I liked that it was androgynous it was kind of like could be a band yeah, could be a guy true. could be a girl you know I like that there's kind of a, a mystery behind it that's so true actually because when I got the invite to the Daisy Jones event where I saw you um I had like I didn't know who you were at the time and I just assumed it was a, I thought, assumed Ralph was a band yeah so many do yeah many do really cool many are though. always like they'll like talk to my band mates and be like oh my god like okay so like tell me about your band and it's like I have band mates <laughs> who have been with me for a while yeah, and, yeah. Like, yeah they're amazing but I am Ralph so yeah I'm always like wait no 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 
no, no, it's me. Like, it's you me. know, yeah. That's and the one cool. behind a lot of. I feel like stuff. it's a very like pop music thing though too. Mm-hmm. It, like encompasses it. I love it. That's how like the icons are made, as I just said. Like just having the one word. So your new EP uh, came out June thirtieth. Yeah. And how's that been going so far? How's the reception been of it? It's been really good. I think like when I released it, I felt really excited about it and mm-hmm. felt like really solid and confident which is so nice when you put Mm -hmm. something out that unwaveringly you're just like this is a great representation of me yeah I feel great about it I think when you have that confidence it kind of just energetically like transcends and like Mm -hmm. just I think people will pick up on that um so I think that's why the reception has kind of been Good, so good is that people are like well you seem to really be excited about yeah. it so be, yeah like, we're gonna listen to it and yeah I've, I've had like a lot of um tv chats which has been really nice mm-hmm. and i did like i did a performance on global morning the other day and i did scary hot and like 30 seconds before i was going out to perform they were like oh uh there's a live audience did you know that and me and my publicists were like no Ooh. no and they were like it's all <laughs> kids under 10 <laughs> And go. And I was like <laughs> singing my like sexiest song about like hooking up with my girlfriend in a car. And I was, like, did you to- dial it back at I all? Did. Yeah. I, I did, yeah. They listen to, they see worse stuff on TikTok. There's yeah. nothing. I know. They're, not, I they're know. exposed I can't to shock them. Now. Yeah. If anything, I was like, they don't get sex ed anymore. And that's uh, true. Oh my this know, is right? the new so. sex ed. <gasps> Like, well, I'll up. give it to you. <laughs> Speaking of different eras, so when it comes to an EP, did you have like a ton of different songs that you whittled down or did you try to produce something really tight with these that you have on it? No, this EP, like originally when I started being like, okay, I'm going to write this next body of work, I was like, my intention was to write a dance, like a, a concrete dance mm. EP um, because Gravity had done so well and it's so fun to perform and my fan base loves dancing to it. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, cool. Let's give them what they want. Let's yeah. do a whole EP full of just dance songs. And then it's funny when you like go into a studio with this sort of strict intention and you're like, okay, I'm going to write a dance song today. But your heart is like, oh, I kind of feel like writing a ballad. It, it's, it's odd. It's like you're trying to force yourself to do something that's yeah. not just kind of happening naturally. So instead I was like, you know what? I'm, I think the mu- the better music is gonna come from just being honest. So if you wanna write a ballad today, cool, let's do that. Um, mm-hmm. And I wrote with so many different, I decided to write with completely new producers and writers on this EP. Oh, cool. Um, and I DM'd like so many different people in LA and in Toronto. So I had a lot of sessions in LA, made so many new friends. Um, and then did a lot of sessions here, like tons, tons of, so there are so many songs that did not make it onto this EP that are so fun. But I think when you're, you know, when you're putting together, like, again, a body of work, there does have to be a little thorough line, you know? So it was, it was, that was the challenging part that I was like, I need to love the songs. Mm Um, but at the same time, they need to make sense altogether. Yeah, and it feels like that. One of the questions I did write, because, well, first and foremost, all of your music is so fun. It's so fun. Fun to dance to, but then fun and just in general. And you're such a good performer. Yeah. So Thank you. One of the no, questions like, was like, every time I'm listening to any, any whether it's the new body work or, or old stuff, it's like, this could be the perfect soundtrack to any movie and I'm like okay well what would the plot be mm. if you're looking at your not just this EP but say your your whole discography oh god you can pick and choose for like different you can pick and or choose you can for pick different this EP. You can pick yeah this maybe era. this EP is easier this <laughs> I think it's so funny because so I actually if I look at like my body of work all the EPs and the, the album that I put out my favorite is the first one that I put out. Just It was called Ralph. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was when I had, yeah, just come from doing folk music. I had just started doing pop music. So there is like, the songs aren't, they're not like mainstream pop. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like, I hadn't spent enough time in the world of sort of like mainstream music to be tainted by kind of like the idea of like, gotta write a radio song and I gotta be this and I gotta, yeah. you know. I was just writing songs with a bunch of friends mm-hmm. and because it felt good and I wanted to. So to me, I think I really like that body of work because it feels so organic and so just like authentic. Yeah, because there's been no other like opinions around exactly. it either. Yeah, and I think obviously like uh, with age and with time and experience and you kind of lose yourself sometimes a little mm-hmm. bit because you, you try on different hats and people tell you what will work and obviously you want it all to work. So you're like, mm-hmm. okay, cool. Let's let's try going super, super, super pop. And then yeah. I, that's not really me. Like I'm not actually, I, I can listen to super pop, but 
I think I realized, you know, a year and a half ago when I was starting to feel a bit discouraged with what I was putting out, I was like, I think I need to like really do some like inner work and kind of ask myself, okay, so what did you love about that first EP? And how can you get, you know, with like this intention of still evolving and being Mm -hmm. like me now, not me then. I'm not trying to go back to Ralph then, but how can you incorporate more of that? And I think it just came down to being Mm -hmm. a bit more courageous with standing up for myself and and sticking with my gut Mm -hmm. you know if I'm like this song maybe this won't be a single like Just a Rose I didn't write Just a Rose being like this is gonna be a radio single Mm -hmm. you know but it's a very important song to me Mm -hmm. I produced the demo and then brought it to my friends who helped me kind of like finesse it so that was already huge and it's about someone who like has a comeback who it's like basically like the brag track that I needed to write for myself to feel motivated again so it's about like someone feeling discouraged and then kind of having this like comeback and like everyone's like wow she's so hot yeah (laughs) Yeah. so you were saying you like worked with new people for this Mm -hmm. so did that like help ground you and find that feeling again that you did like creating your first bit of music yeah like new energy was so important and I think I also I really wanted to find people that were like excited to work with me Mm -hmm. I didn't want to feel like I was like pulling favors or pulling strings or, or even just working with people who are used to like the Ralph that I was four years ago. Mm-hmm. I needed to work with people who were like, uh, cool, whatever you're wanting to do, I want to do it. And I sent them like references of what I was interested in and some demos that I had been working on. And like all the sessions were so fun, which was my goal. Mm-hmm. Like there was so much laughter. Um, there was like such like such a safe feeling of um, like trust and disclosure in the room. Like mm-hmm. you could talk about anything and that's also so important when you're writing like you need to feel like you can reveal anything and not feel Mm -hmm. judged or like unsafe or you know embarrassed or something so that was important and everyone I worked with like uh yeah there was like so many I worked with my producer who Jordan um executive produced the EP and I was at his house like every day for weeks and like we'd have like full therapy sessions and then be like okay I guess that's Let's write a song, you know, and then something good would come I love that. Where did the idea of using na- angel numbers for the title of the EP come from? My girlfriend is really into astrology, and uh, I kept texting her at 222 when we first started dating. And she was like, okay, I think 222 is your angel number. And I was like, what's that? Looked it up, and then 222 um, kind of, like, stands for – it basically means, like, if you keep seeing 222, then you're on the right path. Like, whatever yeah. – um, obstacles you're facing you need to like stick to your gut and just be honest with yourself and it has to do with like um feeling grounded and finding passion and creativity and it just felt very relevant to um my life at this time and it was like I knew what it was going to be called the EP before I had the songs like I was like 222 has just been the name of this EP since I have a tattoo on my arm of 222 now like yeah it's kind of been like the 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 motto of and the like last almost year and like a guiding light through exactly. it too. Mm-hmm. Oh, so cool. Uh, you mentioned creative expression, and mm-hmm. I know that you also just recently directed one of your music videos. Mm-hmm. How important, not just in the music production aspect of things in writing, is exploring different art forms and getting you know flexing different creative muscles in the process of creating Ralph. I think it's really important, and I I feel like I'm seeing it more and more with different artists all Mm -hmm. across the industry, you know? Like, when you've done something for a long time and you're like, okay, I feel really confident in that, it's really, it just, like, continues to kind of, like, funnel this this confidence, and I think, like, it, it, it continues this evolution that is so important as a person and as an artist. It's like, okay, so... I've always wanted to direct, but uh, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I'd be good at it. Mm-hmm. But at a certain point, you're like, I kind of, I'm kind of directing my life and my career. So sure. what would be the difference of standing behind a camera yeah. and doing it? It's just, it's just. I think sometimes we get really wrapped up in like the title of things and the role mm-hmm. of things. And uh, a friend of mine was like, you're basically already directing, you, you know, mm-hmm. everything you do. So like, just just do it. Um, and it it uh, it made me like understand. I think just it just helps you understand like what it means to be an artist, the entirety of it when you're trying on all of these different um, these different roles. Like I mean, yeah, produce I produced the uh, Pain Relief music video and I edited both Scary Hot and Pain Relief music video. Um, oh, wow. So I feel like this year I was like, you know what? I think like as I continue to kind of like try new things and like encourage myself to be more courageous, I I just need to like try things that. I am scared of because 
I don't know. And was it what you expected? Do you feel more confident? Like, could you just step in tomorrow to do the same thing? For sure. I love yeah. editing, as it turns out. I mean, I love control. So that is, <laughs> makes Same, sense. that's why I edit this And also, podcast. like, we're just, like, all on social media editing things all the time. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I was like, this is basically, like, TikTok, but... Uh, and no shade to editors. It's obviously more than that. But uh, you, you kind of just, like... It's the same muscles. It's, exactly. like, the same, like it's the same vision same concept exactly and as like the songwriter I'm telling a story when I write the song yeah. so yeah. when I'm writing a concept for a music video and then editing it it's so cool because I'm yeah, like that's so I'm making sure that I'm the one telling the whole story and when it's something that's deeply personal like pain relief I was like I have to be the one to tell the story you know? well I think you can see the difference between various artists and maybe that's the difference between someone who is writing just to try to get a radio hit or something mm-hmm. like that who mm-hmm maybe is trying to not writing and just like yeah trying to fit into a box versus i would say being a storyteller first is probably more important and i think that definitely translates to sure there's like an integrity that i have never ever been able to lose uh much to the you know dislike of some like i think when you're an artist it's like you always struggle with like well integrity versus monetary success you know what i mean like sometimes i'll write a song and be like i know this isn't going to be the single but i am going to put it on the ep Mm -hmm. yeah I have to. And yeah. it's so hard to make those decisions because there's always this what if, you know, what if I did the other song and it yeah. popped off and it's really hard. You never know. It's like, there's just never, ever, no one ever knows anything in music. So you're just always kind of, again, going with your gut and being like, I guess then on the flip side. So it, for live performances, do you have kind of some of those songs that maybe didn't make the EP that you perform live or do you no. know? No, they sort of sit in this song cemetery, this <laughs> sad <laughs> song cemetery. cemetery. Yeah. Um, no, I, with live though, I think on this tour, like I do want to throw in a couple of like songs that are released that we've all forgotten about. There's a song called Bedroom Eyes that I wrote years ago that is on mm-hmm. one of the EPs, maybe on the album. And it's like this like really chaotic, like gay dance song that I wrote for my roommate, Matt, because he wanted to grind with the guys at the club. <laughs> and uh, and everyone's forgotten about it, including me. And then the other day I was like, we need to bring Bedroom Eyes back. I love yeah. it. Until that story is. Yeah, the yeah exactly. Do <laughs> you like to grind at the club? Yeah. <laughs> uh, do like you take into consideration like, if like fans are like in your DMs being like, this song has to be on the set list or like, do you take like that feedback or is it truly just like, it's Ralph's show, it's like what I want to do and it's just whatever, do you take the feedback from the audience I always well? like, I'm so responsive on all my socials. Like mm-hmm. I really, really try to make sure that my fans know that it's me, I'm listening. Like yeah. it's not someone like Some, answering yeah. for me. <laughs> I don't have those, I don't have that money. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, it's, it's hard because at the same time, like you, you have obligations where it's like there are songs that are like the most streamed right. and everyone will be disappointed if I don't play those ones mm-hmm. and then there are songs that I want to play um, but at this point I have so many songs that I've released that when you're putting together a set list like it's hard it's, tough. Yeah. it's really hard yeah. um, so I think like if someone asked for like a random song yeah. that didn't stream that well you know I'd, I'd be like oh maybe you yeah, know and of then, course. but it's not it's not that I'm not listening if you're getting to that point, you'll be able to start doing like surprise songs on a set list maybe one day. Yeah, well, cool. we want to make, we're doing like some remix versions and <gasps> I'd love so to fun. do, I remember years ago I saw my friend um, Caroline, uh, her artist name is Your Smith and she was doing a Toronto show and she like segued from one of her songs into Love on Top by Beyonce <gasps> in this like amazing seamless just segue where all of a sudden she was playing Beyonce and the crowd was like, oh my God. So I wanted something like that where it's like I, so I do cool. a Ralph song and then suddenly... You know, oh, so we fun. do this little segue and the audience is like, wait, so <laughs> we're figuring out what that is. Yeah. What's the hardest part about tour life? Um, I think it's always hard just like being away from your comforts, you know, mm-hmm. like I love my cat. I miss my cat when I'm away. Mm-hmm. Um, I miss my bed. I just like don't really like sleeping in like hotel beds, you know, mm-hmm. um, and eating is hard because um, I have like eating intolerances and I'm like a really healthy person. So <clears throat> it's really hard to eat well. And if you're not eating well, then you're not like fueling your brain mm-hmm. and your body. So usually like halfway through tour, I have like a meltdown. Um, that makes but, sense. Yeah, it, everyone is prepared for it. Like, I think everyone, <laughs> to be honest, like me and my band, because we've toured so much together, we all have like check ins and we all have days where we just wake up and we're like, something back home is happening or we're really tired. And we always like let each other know, like, hey, it's one of those days, like, it's not you, yeah. but I just need my space today. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, yeah, chill, no problem. Like, put on those sound canceling headphones and, yeah. you know, it, it's hard being away from home. 
I guess that's true because you're also like traveling with the same people for mm-hmm. some, and you're working, living, and you're in cars eating. for like literally like 16. It's so Jesus. funny because here, if if I was like, we're going to my cottage, it's a two hour ride. We'd be like, okay, that's not bad. On tour, we're like, uh, yeah, so we're driving today. It's, it's 10 hours. We're like, okay, chill. Yeah. Tomorrow, 16. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Like oh you my just. God. Relentless. Oh God. I'd watch so much TV in the car. Oh my yeah. God. I could not. Uh, my cars. You, you don't get car sick. You're not I, car I do. Sick I used to be able to read and now I cannot. I, I was like the sounds of like spending 10 to 16 hours in a car. I'm like, I could not do it. Yeah. That's why I could you, never You have to. <laughs> yeah. I know people are always like, they're always like, oh my God. Like, do you have like a tour bus? And I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't. I have a van. <laughs> oh my God. And how long is this tour? Uh, it's not too off? bad. It's I think uh, we we kick off in LA. Uh, I think on the I should know, but I think it's the thirteenth or the fourteenth, and um, and then we kind of crawl back uh, across mm-hmm. the states and kind of like dip into Canada and dip back. But we do have like a couple funny like we'll have like three days off on like one part, so we'll kind of get to like I don't know have an adventure and do something fun on those like three days oh, off. That's and, nice. Yeah. So. If people want to see, most of our audience is in Toronto. If people want to see you in Toronto, when are you here? October 6th um, at the Great Hall. And Which is such be... a good concert venue. I it love is. that venue. And it's the last show of the tour. We're oh, ending in big Toronto. one. Okay. Party. And I haven't had a Toronto show in, honestly, like I haven't had a Ralph headline Toronto show mm-hmm. in, I think, almost four years. The last one I had was the Mod Club, which was... Sorry yeah. to toot my own horn, but epic four years ago. <laughs> I had like so many uh, guest artists. I had a costume change. I had like a brass horn section. Ooh. I had drag queens. I, I, so I'm trying to like rival that one with this one and make it really good. But um, I, I, I need to pick a good theme for the Toronto one. That's a good it's, tease. It's yeah. So yeah. make sure you guys buy tickets. I don't wait to buy tickets for these types of things. because Yeah. There aren't actually tickets really like at the door as no. people sort of think there are. People are too last minute. Just like be tight a for like two seconds of your life and buy tickets and then put it in your calendar and then you have something to look forward to exactly you should exactly. always have a concert in your like in your calendar to look I forward by to that exactly rule. and then you and your friends can start texting about your outfits and being like what are we wearing what are we yeah. thinking do you know what i mean yes. like and then you make the playlist and you start like listening and stream like that's yeah. like my pre-concert ritual so yes oh my god making outfits too and mm-hmm. it's in october so it's spooky month so it's like even makes sense and to be dressed up early enough in october that it's not going to be too cold so you can oh, oh, even so, better you know yeah even exactly. better mm-hmm. i mean like i'm sold everybody else should be so make sure you get tickets to that <laughs> thank you so much for coming on talking fast it's thank been you. so great talking to you uh every single show you get to look into the camera and say whatever you want to the audience you can plug yourself you can leave everyone with a piece of advice do whatever oh you want. god but that is your camera right there okay a piece of advice um okay well this is ralph uh advising everybody to um i don't know yeah be like be authentic and stick to your gut and find your angel number and uh and trust it because i think it's been like um for me, this has been the most uh, like gratifying EP that I've put out yet, and it feels like the most honest and true. And uh, I gotta say, there's like, there's like there's angel faith in there. So you know, yeah, find your angel number and stick to it. I love that. Make sure you go stream her angel numbers two 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 everywhere. Thanks for coming. <laughs>
like I what I love about the city is that you feel like you're in the city you're a part of the yes, city something exactly. else that's larger and bigger than you as opposed to like a smaller town or a smaller city sometimes you kind of just know what to expect on the day to day and I like a little bit of chaos I like a little Same. bit of uh, opportunity a little bit of uh, spontaneity perhaps uh, and sometimes you just don't get that which is yeah. fine if you're someone who like wants to I just do never saw myself living in the same place that I like grew up in like in my head I was always like you leave and you like it's like you're, it's your bird's nest and then you fly away somewhere else that's how I like always like in my bones felt I never never once and I probably anyone I grew up with can attest to this did anyone ever think I would move back yeah nor I'm sure do they ever I won't well, my parents don't even live there you're anymore. driving down the 401 did you uh do you flip it off uh no i'm still i still like I, it's a great town to visit for 48 hours but i've never i've never had that longing i don't i don't i've never had that feeling that i want to go back i've just always known like literally everything i did as of my ninth like being in ninth grade was so that i could move to toronto okay where what do you think if you did stay what do you think you'd be doing right now for a job yeah like well nothing life. with my media degree um <laughs> i would be don't know what if if my path was to stay in Coburg, i would be like a high school teacher yeah yeah i think that i think a high school teacher brings all my okay, skills together like, like like i don't know like english me- media media studies philosophy psychology all those bullshit ones that you take just to get good grades so you can get into university writers craft. i won the philosophy <laughs> writers craft that was my favorite class i won the philosophy award philosophy for what what did you do i don't know i talked about aristotle and plato like i have no idea i had the like highest up with- i had the greatest cl- i had the gr- best mark in that class that just goes to if show you're you. someone in high school right now if you're trying to get a scholarship fine but otherwise don't care about your marks no it doesn't matter doesn't matter. I also think they like. I cared a lot up. about my marks. I did too, and I didn't need to. Exactly. That, yeah, that's what, how I feel. That wasn't really a question, but <laughs> that's where we stumbled <laughs> upon. Uh, voice note question number two What are what artist is the soundtrack to your life right now? Taylor Allison Swift. <laughs> middle name, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like, think about it. Think about it. Like, if it's, the, it's to what Mama Mia is to ABBA, right? Like, Taylor Swift has so many eras. I okay. have so many eras. There's a different mood for everything. So Taylor Swift. That's huge. I think that's that a very... What about you? Uh, Is it supposed <laughs> to be a specific soundtrack? Though? No, but they said ABBA. So like an artist. Oh my God. I didn't even read that part. Like how ABBA is for Mamma Mia. Yes. Whoopsies. Uh, <laughs> that's why you said that. I was like, that's random that you said that. <laughs> uh, for me, okay. Everyone knows that I listen to so many different genres of music and pull out like random... Jacob uh, just listens to his songs of summer playlist. That's his... Uh, <laughs> that's the sound. No, you know what I was running to today? And I, I, this I actually will return to all the time. All, like whether I'm... Okay, I live in a sports movie, I think, in my head. Interesting. And I'm like always trying to hype myself up. So if I'm driving to like my rec soccer league or I'm running today or even if I'm like going to the grocery store uh, and I need to like pick up like a big load of groceries, I'm driving there. (laughs) Doesn't take that long. Shout out to the environment. I'm driving there. Uh, I turn down, (laughs) turn up the music and it's it's always like some kind of electronic music. So today it's like Swedish House Mafia is what I've been uh, listening to. They released a live album, uh, which is actually picks and chooses like maybe two to three songs from a European tour that they just did. Oh, that's cool. And it's really good. That's the soundtrack to your life right now? Yeah, so I just pretend that like I'm like in a montage a lot of the time on the way to the big game. Oh, that's yeah. so wholesome. I love that. Um, okay, we're pivoting because it's called mailbag. It's not called mailbag. <laughs> we're pivoting because that's how voicemail works where the questions are just like whiplash half the time. How do you deal with feeling behind compared to others? Oh, you know what? Sometimes it happens to all of us, this feeling, feeling it behind. It literally does happen to everyone. So. And it, like, you, like you said, it's very ebbs and flows as well. Like you're sometimes your head and you're feeling really, really good about kind of things that you've established in your life, whether it's you just landed a good job or maybe you just got into a cool relationship that you're really enjoying. Um, and then sometimes things go poorly. And I think that that's just what I return to, to remember is that like no one person is or no two people are following the same path in life. And maybe there are certain like milestones that are uh, common amongst most people. And maybe you hit those at different times. Maybe you never achieve them because you don't want to. Uh, And so divining your own 
life is maybe more important than comparing, which I've well, comparison is the thief of joy, but also like you can think you're like I was perceived to be like if we're looking at like a university class I was perceived to be ahead of my classmates because I was a producer so young and then one random Wednesday I lost my job yeah so then it's like oh back to zero so it's like there's no way to know what's going to happen and I don't think there is any being behind I it kind of reminded me of this question I what was I watching I think it was TikTok but it was like a podcast on TikTok Mm -hmm. and someone was talking about time and how we have to stop thinking about time as like we're moving towards it we have to think of it that it's happening around us so like instead of us thinking we're like going into the future that like you're trying to make something happen to that future that you're moving towards well there is no future that you're moving towards you're there's only ever the right now there is the past but there's only ever what you like where you're living what's happening in this moment right now so once you stop thinking about like moving towards this thing that doesn't actually exist you can actually find a lot more peace in what you're doing now so i think that kind of applies to like not comparing to others not feeling behind because what are you behind for there's no race there's no finish line what is it going six feet under no thanks so like i think as long as you stop thinking about it as being behind in some race or in something or what you're supposed to be doing like i i don't know there's like think of all those million success stories of like people that started companies at 40 or became an actor this age and this and that whatever like there's it's truly like you're the main character of your own life there's only your story that is happening and evolving with you you're not working towards anything because there is technically no like time in the future so just live laugh love in the moment preach is this this is probably why you were winning those philosophy awards <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe actually i think it was because i did a presentation on assisted suicide and why it should be legal everywhere oh interesting yeah. that's a topic for another yeah, day yeah that's a topic for another day <laughs> anyways thank you so much for your questions Sorry, Izzy, I slapped the table. Thank you so much for your questions. As always, uh, make sure you can leave some more for voicemail. One day we're going to get this phone working and we're going to be able to actually answer the phone. Who do you think it's going to be? I don't know. Exciting. Well, you'll have to listen to another episode (laughs) to find out who that could potentially be. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Talking Fast. We will see you next Wednesday. Goodbye. (laughs) 